Hello! I, it's been a while since I've made a video. I figured today would be a good day to start doing these little videos again. I'm on the lake. I got myself out of here. It's beautiful. And 5.55 just passed by. I'm trembling actually, just trying to get the courage to even talk about everything that's happened since my last video is so I am actually remarkably being evicted again. This will be my fifth move in the last five years. Just for being different, being less privileged and having less power. I uh, did get my hypocrite results back in May and to my utter disbelief and mild suspicion that I actually have endured a significant amount of brain damage in the last just four to five years from the chronic amount of stress I've endured. Um, stress and trauma and ups and downs of life are a cause hypocrite attacking cells and everybody, it's the same for everybody, but unfortunately having type one narcolepsy, I was born with a 90% deficiency. So I'm working with a sandbox while everyone was born with the football field, essentially, if I could, if that makes any sense. So I've actually read articles about how type one narcoleptics are uh, seen to be a very high resilient uh, uh, individuals. High resilience to stress, you know, Everyone needs to understand what hypocretin and what hypocretin is and the importance of it in our day-to-day -day lives. And the fact that type 1s versus type 2s, or even just type 2 narcoleptics too, I mean, those without, without cataplexy are at a significant decline. But type 1s definitely have 90% less than everybody else. Truly, actually... Um, it, uh, the average for hypocretin could be up between a, th a thousand to two thousand for some people. Ma I mean, majority people. My number is at a less than sign, less than fifty. And being born narcoleptic type one, I started off with just having one hundred and ten hypocretin, because that's what our baseline is for being type one. That's what. Um, provokes the cataplexy and you know moon is instability I mean geez being a teenager was you know and now I give myself a lot more forgiveness and grace just because I was an emotional mess I outsmarted this disorder in a way I mean had I not chosen the career in mental health I maybe would have been stigmatized and deemed mentally ill when I really wasn't I, I was doing all the tools. I mean, my symptoms really started getting really more noticeable after I got my diagnosis. And that was, you know, after I, like last month, my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. I did not expect it was going to take a toll on my life like it did. Also, I intended to apply for SSDI with the in good intentions of being a still working body only to later learn that um, there is no real realism, realistic world where you can have SSDI and, and still work, apparently. Even though there's a cap on how much money you're allowed to make if you were to get approved for SSDI. But um, after my several d denials and having a hearing, losing my job, losing my housing several different times, just being targeted, um, you know, my desire to work did not matter at all. I literally just wanted a little bit of help. I couldn't take on a full caseload, be a full time working, able-bodied person in society, but I can still work. 
and still be, you know, use my wisdom and knowledge and experience and, and, and clinical background to be a person that is a public service provider as I sought out to do. But apparently it's not a thing anymore. I've had lawyers and people tell me they would, that would turn me down just because I was working part-time at the time when, when I originally was applying for SSDI. This has been a long road of ball drops and slipping through the cracks of the system because I'm not, I don't fit into the box. I'm an anomaly. And essentially, I'm an anomaly of my own type 1 narcoleptic crew. Any two, just for the fact that my hypocretin is at less than 50 now. So let me t explain these numbers to you, just to kind of give you a little bit of information about narcoleptics and what hypocretin is. Um, hypocretin, for type 1s, the baseline is having either 110, and I forgot what the, the little letters behind it, it's like PM, PG dash ML, I don't know what the numbers mean, but like, this is what I learned. <laughs> so bear with me. Type 1s are either 110 or below. Type 2 narcoleptics without the cataplexy are either between 200 and 110 because um, for all people without narcolepsy, anybody else in the world it has a baseline of either 200 hypocretin or above. And some people can have 2,000, 3,000 hypocretin in their brain. I mean, legitimately, I am an anomaly. I, the fact that I'm still present, strong, my strength is my ability to be weak at times when I need to be, just so I can continue moving forward. There is no pill that you can take. There is no one-step solution. It's literally a huge wellness package deal when you have this disorder. And that's what I want to do is I want to inform the world that type 1s are at a very high risk of being deemed or probably misdiagnosed or mismedicated um, due to the fact that the symptoms present themselves like a mental illness or get deemed uh, with the seizure disorder because they, the cataplexy is unfamiliar. I mean, the average diagnosis time from when your symptoms start is about 10 years. And thankfully, I was really lucky to have a very short time span between when my symptoms got really intrusive and noticeable and getting in the way of my ability to, do, man, to maintain my everyday goals like homework and, I mean, I was, it, was, it was rough. My master's degree was hard, but I did it. And I did it. I'm still here. I'm not awesome all the time, though. I'm, I'm pretty much symptomatic throughout the entire day. Various types of symptoms, whether it's brain fog, space cadet, um, micro sleeping, um, manic y, uh, manic depressive. And now I have CPTSD, which includes this awesome paranoid ideations, you know, because I've been targeted by several landlords and now I mean I'm being evicted again and not only am I being discriminated against it's my mother she's the the leasee I'm just the tenant we offered to pay more money we sent a request to renew the lease with an offer to pay more money and this landlord's decisions of how to respond fall right in line with discrimination. And I've had issues with these landlords. I mean, it's been a very peaceful last year, but it was a rough start, I'm not gonna lie. But I mean, once you set boundaries and you get the right people involved to help protect you, you know, having this disorder as well, I have to utilize a lot of resources. NAMI, for sure, is a huge help. Anybody out there who has an invisible chronic disorder or feels the need that they need somebody to listen to them, NAMI, National Alliance for Mental Illness, are your people. Contact them, get started. It really is a huge tool. I mean, I learned so much about premise alert, uh, premise alert forms are these, I'll explain more about it later because I'm getting a little scattery brain just thinking about it because 
without NAMI, I would not feel as calm as I am right now. Yeah. I have an agreed eviction with my landlord. You will not believe the things that have happened since April. I have just made sure I've remained humble. I, you know, I'm just grateful for the time I have had here. I'm not going to get teary-eyed right now. I still believe that, you know, there's hope. Because I'm dealing with a lot of irrationality and people who feel like they are invisible from accountability. I don't deserve this. I've already lost 60% from 110 to having a number of less than 50. You can do the math, it's about a 60% decline. So if we were to look at the big picture for narcoleptics literally only being born with 10% hypocretin than the average population, I've got about 4% hypocretin left. Four. I am struggling and I'm scared, but this discomfort that I live in is quite familiar now. And I wish nobody ever experienced the injustice and systemic malfunction that I have experienced firsthand, being a also provider at one point, to being someone who needed services. Oh, the stigma. And also the, ex the ability for people to exploit you and, and, and deem you less than just because of you are struggling. I mean, I would never, nor have I, because I know what it feels like. I still do. <sighs> Pray for me, please. I have not yet been able to find a lawyer. I have not been able to get help through Prairie State Legal Services. True, good, honest help. I mean, I've just been swept under the rug. I've gotten advice that's helped me move along myself along, but they're being funded by HUD. My mother and I have also played additional complaints with IDHR and HUD. Apparently we have a investigator, but I we have heard nobody from, we have not heard from anybody. And we placed these complaints we, months ago. It's getting tabled again. I mean, this is gonna continue to happen to me unless somebody stops it and gets, it, it makes change for me because I, I, I'm, becoming stretched pretty thin. I'm terrified about what kind of more neurological brain damage I'm gonna endure just from the stress of moving. And not to mention, these landlords are not agreeing to the court-ordered agreed eviction that we had set forth in court. I was given a month and a half to have time to still try to find a place to accommodate my needs because I have several different needs with this narcolepsy and cataplexy to ensure my safety and I need to stay in McHenry County. I have no income. This landlord has taken up all 16 months of my state-funded rental assistance. I mean, they took me out of homelessness and are willing to just throw me back. And we even offered to pay more money. I'm dealing with a level of incompetency too of people who don't really understand what mental illness is or what people with invisible chronic disorders that presents as such. I mean, just anybody out there that can help me and represent me, I do believe I can. I have enough stuff and evidence to prove, to put a motion through to get this eviction dismissed to get more time it's dangerous for me to be forced to move during the winter months being displaced somewhere I'm not unfamiliar I have built my family and my tribe around here why put me in danger and it's not me being putting myself in danger it's the lack of awareness of other people that's what's dangerous for me it is dangerous out there in the world 
when they don't understand what you are dealing with. They just see what they see and they, and they label you as such. And they don't listen anymore. I'm terrified, you guys. But I'm calm. I'm meditating. I'm praying to the gods, the universe, the elements. I need a break from this constant fear of my safety. I'm dealing with people that just really are not being really rational and I've got so much I can. I just, I haven't even, we didn't even have a trial. I mean, she, I mean, this landlord essentially utilized a retaliatory eviction because the home that I was living in for two years was never up to code. There is still yet not a single smoke alarm in the house. And I found this out, like I discovered this I, uh, from a friend about like two or three weeks before the lease was gonna be up and thankfully I had time to go get in, uh, an inspection done. And yeah, there's several code violations. She's violated the lease on several different fronts. And now she's violating the agreed eviction. It's causing me mental distress and it's causing my, it's actually amplifying my disabledness. This is a disabling neurodegenerative condition. Neurodegenerative, it's really hard to say that word. Well anyways, I'm gonna enjoy the sunset. I got kayaks for my birthday this year. I mean, I just don't understand all the hate. But I am tough, I mean, I do love me and I know I am worth it. And I'm worth fighting for. Because this isn't about me anymore, you guys. It's way bigger than me. This is about like a super big systemic situation. I've been failed on numerous occasions on several different organizations. And I will bring that to light. I'm not here to be the martyr. But I'm not going to go down without fighting. I'm wearing dad's hat. All right. Pray for me. Please. Light and love.